Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Prismata. Let's jump back in the queue and see what Trump is up to while we wait for a match. Hey, we got a match. Swande? Schwande? Schwanda? Okay. Uh. I mean... Looks like... A turn to Animus into... Like, do you want a Gaussite into Reservoir? It seems pretty slow. I don't think that's realistic. I think just building Tarsiers into, like, Perforators is a thing. The main counter for this that I see from Player 1 is, like, Boreholes are pretty good against the Frostbite threat. And they also apply some threat to the red player. But okay, he's just gonna go for a higher econ red. Fine. I could get a perforator here to be a available as a defender if he like does something rushy next turn, but he's not going to. I can build a perforator next turn. Yeah, I think I'm probably just going to play, like, nothing but red. I don't know. I guess there could be a chance to squeeze in another tech building at some point. I'm not sure when. He could build a Gaussite here, I guess, and then I would wish I had built a Perforator, but I don't mind responding with a Rhino there. What is this? Double Perforator. I'm not going to respect this perforator as an attacker. Although maybe I should. He wants to build something that costs five or six blue. Uh, five or six next turn with his blue. Which leaves him with seven bucks. Is he going to be able to spend all that red? Maybe not. But um, this lets me get a conduit, which I think is a pretty big deal. Whereas if I cancel the perforator to build a rhino, I can't do that. I could cancel the Perforator to build a Blast Forge and, like, get a Frostbite or something to make his blue look dumb. <clears throat> right, like, a wall next turn is going to be pretty good, isn't it? Frostbites are good. Wall, Tarsier, and another Frostbite, I guess, spends my money. Maybe a Perforator instead of the Tarsier, I don't know. should click his perforator, but I'm not sure. <laughs> really? I think I would respond to that with, like, walls or um, splitter or something, right? I don't know. He, If he builds double frostbite, he doesn't really have any attack, so a wall is fine. Okay, this is also reasonable. Tarsier Perforator. Hmm. And eleven dollars just happens to be like Tarsier Wall Frostbite. Which has got to scare him, right? Gaussite. 
Wow. Seems kind of greedy to me. I kind of want to have a cheap defender available, like, to fill this gap so that attacking for four is not very promising for him. Like, maybe I should just build a Rhino. And a Splitter? It means I'm not building a Frostbite, which is not great for me. I mean, like, if I just build a wall, he exploits it by attacking for four, but I guess he doesn't really want to attack for four, does he? He doesn't want to click that perforator. He wants to build, like, wall, tarsier, or something, right? I think this is alright. He only really wants to attack for three, and I can cope with that. Although, let's make this a perforator so that I have a defender for next turn, which I think I will probably need since I'm planning to lose this engineer, probably. It also threatens him a bit more, which is nice. Okay, that's a good point. Patroller is, like, an efficient way to spend stuff that, like, leaves him okay with floating a red. So maybe he does want to click his perforator after all. But, I don't know. This offers him, like, an awkward choice, I think. And if I can just keep building a Frostbite per turn to cancel out his wall per turn, like, that's a great investment for me, right? I'm spending two bucks and he's spending five. Plus, of course, the attack is, is building up. But that's happening for both of us. All right, good. We did. He attacked for three. Very exciting. So here he wants to attack for four. Well, four is fine. I just lose perforator. If he attacks for five, that's fine. Only if he attacks for three am I inconvenienced. Which would mean holding both of these back, which I don't think he really wants to do. Well, I guess on my four attack, he's losing Perforator anyway. Hmm. Which means that attacking for four is his max, and three is leaving back Rhino, which he's perfectly happy to do. So maybe I need to find some other line that makes that less appealing for him. Like this. Now he has to click the Rhino to make me lose Perforator instead of Drone. Okay. I'm a little scared of this Gaussite symbiote. Alright, those are some good patrollers.
Would I take this breach if he offered it to me? I don't know. It kills two rhinos. But it leaves him, like, never needing to defend again. This I would take. Because it kills a rhino and a couple drones. Ah. But I have to... Accept bad granularity this turn and, like, not defend at all next turn. <laughs> this might be a bit, a bit tough for me to actually do. So first of all, let's see how this looks. Let's say I take it, right? What am I left with? It's kind of tough. But I can do it. Right? It's just I'm not really threatening anything anymore. I don't think that's such a great idea. We're already like doing well by making him hold back drones. We don't have to spend our frostbites to make the drone holds get actual value. Here he's just losing a wall. So he has all this actual attack. We can build another wall. I don't know, I, now that he's got a patroller, like, and is threatening to continue building more patrollers, um, I'm not so sure these frostbites are such great ideas. When they're only threatening two freeze, they're not nearly as good. So... What then? Two perfs? Doesn't seem that great. Does threaten a lot. I don't like my position, and I don't know what to do about it. His pixie also leaves him with good exploitability, which, like, I'm not granular right now, and he can take advantage of that because he has a pixie. Um, I knew that when I was defending, but I didn't really have any good ideas for what to do about it. Could have held back a drone, I guess. That's another idea. That gets even more uh, abuse, doesn't it? But it means I don't have to defend so much soon. I don't know. It's probably a good thing for him to do, I think. But it means I'll have the luxury to get like more Tarsiers, I think. Since he's spending a frostbite. I don't know. I mean, he spent it to, like, do two damage, which is pretty good. For him. What do we keep changing our minds about? I guess the fact that I'm getting a pretty huge breach if he does anything like that is the problem. <laughs> I think he should click the pixie to attack for six. Since that does exploit me a bit. I'm pretty happy with just four. I need to add on some more attack. Getting granularity is also good. So just how much am I threatening next turn? I don't know, this, this seems fine. I'm not gonna count it out. He can exploit me, but he's gonna have just as much trouble doing it. Oh no, that's the wrong defense. You should lose the force fields. Well, mm, I don't know. Losing, he, he's less granular now, and that's why I immediately felt that was wrong, but 
It means that my Frostbites are less powerful because he owns fewer walls. But they still have 10 freeze, right? did do this. What happens to him? He loses three of these units. Threatens eight plus three. But like, I don't know. Right now, they're not doing anything, so why am I so worried about them? I'm just getting out more attack, and he's having to hold most of his back. It's a state of affairs I'm reasonably happy with. Why mess around, right? Here he needs to lose the two force fields onto wall. He can't, like, um, he can't cause himself to lose walls to deny me frostbite value. I wonder if I should have not clicked the perforator. I'd be more granular on defense. But I guess he could then have lost a wall instead of two force fields, which would be pretty amazing for him. Okay, I think here I am going to use the frostbites. Kill three attackers, he's down to six plus three. wall he has six plus three no let's build a splitter I lose the perforator then maybe but I guess that's okay So now I've sort of released some of the pressure on him, right? He has much more defense than he needs for a little while. Um, I did this, I think, for a good reason, i.e. that it made him lose a bunch of attack. But this is his chance to accumulate attack without having to worry too much about defending. Probably responding to this with perforators. And he actually is able to attack for all of this very easily, so I should not do anything weird like gambit him. Just hold a drone. Keep extending my attack lead. I would be thrilled for this to happen. He should save his frostbite until the other two arrive so that he threatens to actually kill something important.
I guess I'm building Wall Rhino next turn. So he can reach for exact if I do this, and I don't really see any reason to offer him that. Right? Nine is six. No, five, nine. Okay, yeah, so lose two of these onto these. Certainly isn't losing any attack. Yeah, okay. So now this big store of defense that he's built up when, uh, well, before I frostbit him, uh, is starting to degrade. But I'm in a tough position because of his frostbites, so I have to survive whatever offensive thing he can come up with. And if I can, without having to sacrifice too much, uh, I think I should be winning here just because I have so much more real attack than he does, right? I have. Seven, eight, nine. He has three, five, maybe call it six. Economies are the same. Here, he can breach for exact if he attacks with everything and clicks both frostbites. Uh, I'm willing to let him have that if that's what he wants, I think. And actually, in order to not be exploited, he has to lose one of these, a patroller. If he wants to keep the patroller alive, he has to lose everything else, which doesn't seem very good for him. So, yeah, go ahead. Come at me. Good. He can't do it. He really should be clicking this at some point, right? Like, I'll respond to that by just holding back Steel Splitters, but it's something he should definitely like think of doing. I don't know. I guess when I have a breach for exact, maybe I should take it. Maybe not. He's not offering me a breach anyway, so I'll just hold back some attackers and I'll be fine. He can only click the symbiote once. Keep alive five health worth of stuff plus what he absorbs on. If he wants to absorb on wall, he has to lose an attacker. But that's still 11 plus 6. I guess this will have to do. I was wrong. He doesn't have to lose an attacker. Don't know what I was thinking there. Oh, he did. It was Perforator. Good. I forgot. You don't usually think of Perfs as attackers anyway. So I'm being exploited here, but who cares, right? I have three walls left and more attackers, and he has nothing. And he's getting breached. Hmm, one, two. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's getting breached for exact. And he only has three attack left. Concede? Your big play didn't work. Give up. Oh well. Okay. Well, that was a long one. 
sort of. What exactly happened here? I think, like, it was just better frostbite management, maybe? Like, I... I mean, obviously, first attacker was good, too. Um... His Gaussite seems pretty questionable. He made very little use of all that, um, all that green until the end when it was sort of too late. I guess he built a, built a few force fields, but they weren't that great. Oh, and he built boreholes. That's true. Those were f pretty good for him, uh, because they meant that I couldn't keep doing this frostbite thing, right? Um, if I, if he had continued building walls with his blue, I would have just gotten way too much value with my frostbites. I think he was right to to switch and build uh, boreholes. But he just like didn't get enough real attackers. I, I'm well, I mean he has four. I have five. Like uh, how much? How different is it really? I think it's just the Frostbites, honestly. Like, um, I was putting a lot more pressure on him while he was in the wall stage of his life, and he couldn't keep building attackers, and he had to build a bunch of prompt stuff, whereas I could, like, build a Steel Splitter or two, a couple more Tarsiers, and I could use perforators to defend. I think once he switched to boreholes, things started looking up for him. Um, and he did well here also to make this play, which I wouldn't have seen, I think. Um, or is it this one? No, here. Where he, um, my defense against six would have been to lose NG wall. No, wait, what am I saying? Ah, would have been what Q does, exactly. Lose force field, force field onto wall because it absorbs well and leaves me granular. But he recognized that these walls are sort of a liability because of my frostbites. Engineer wall gives me less, him less granularity, but like he doesn't really need it that much. Um, Cause I'm never really attacking for enough that it, it's a, a concern and gives me less value for my frostbites. I think that was well done. But he was having to like never attack with his rhinos because of all the, the freeze I was threatening. And here at this point he showed signs of transitioning away from something vulnerable to frostbites, and so I needed to cash them in while I still could. And he was non-granular because of what he did, so he made this play better for me, right? Oh, I didn't take it. Why not? Seems like it would have been okay, right? Attack him for six, he loses three attackers? Why don't we do this? Huh. I think that would have been a better play than what I did. It's, it's the same value as this, but I could have done it a turn earlier, right? I guess this way I got rhinos with two charges, but... Is that really the most important thing? I don't know. Okay, what else? Anything super exciting in this game? Perforators are pretty good defenders, especially against frostbites. And frostbites are pretty good against walls. I don't know. Seems fine, just like squeezed in more Tarsiers, won the game because I was attacking more than he was. What's Trump up to? Is this the same game? No, right? What's well, Sivyat? So cool. Cost I believe ranked around 120th, maybe? Player one. Mm, not so great. Can you do some Valkyrian nonsense here? There's not really much synergy, I don't think. I 
mean, this looks like a Grimbotch Feral Warden set, which is pretty player two favored. I like his uh, trophy set. I was gonna say, wow. I was raising my eyebrows. You guys couldn't see it, but I had a surprised look on my face when that conduit came down. Um, So the thing is, he wants to start DA next turn, right? Um, I think I can respond with AC and have better, quicker access to Feral Wardens plus like another drone or so. Actually, the same number of drones. So he'll have attacker tempo, but I'll have green tempo. I think is going to be the main advantage I'm going to try to push. Probably not getting a chrono filter. Oh, interesting. He's going for a sort of higher econ thing, huh? Well, I could get two drones here. That leaves me TTC next turn, which is pretty good. Or maybe 1-1-C? One, one We'll see. He's probably building an Animus next turn, in which case TTC is better because I don't want to give him Feral Warden value. Maybe T1C, something like that. I think Fastimus is a better line for player two here, but I don't know. It's hard to work Feral Wardens in when you start with Fastimus, I guess. really that amazing? I don't think so. Oh, Valkyrian, huh? I don't think that's so great either, is it? If he wants a Valkyrian, maybe I should just, like, punch him? Because, like, Feral Warden and then another Grimbotch and an NG to replace the two that I'm about to lose sort of works out pretty well for me, I think. Yeah, he, he wants a Feral Warden, so or he wants he wants this, Valkyrian. Um, some Grimbotches make that bad, but maybe he just responds with, like, Tarsier Wall. I don't know, I guess if he does that, it's not the end of the world for me. I can threaten more attack next turn. But I, I think Tars this this makes it the thing he wants to do, Valkyrian, kind of awkward. What if I did this? Kind of some of both. Get some permanent attack in, but also make it bad for him to not defend. Let's try that. Ideally, you'd like to buy Grimbotches one at a time, because their defense phase will... You don't usually want to defend with two Grimbotches at once, certainly not this early in the game. Okay, well, he's got the wrong tech. You know, this Grimbotch forced a wall out of him, I guess that's cool. Uh, let's build another Grimbot, because we're about to get over the Absorb Barrier anyway. Chrono Filter time? We'd be floating a lot of red if we were to build um, a Valkyrie in here. Probably not, right? Another Conduit doesn't seem very good. Let's just get another Drone. And 
he like has the wrong colors of tech at this point. I'll get a Feral Warden and another Grimbotch to keep the pressure on to make it hard for him to Valkyrian. Next turn we're threatening 5-6 damage. Which is how much defense he'll have. If he wants a Valkyrian, he has to force field as well. Probably a conduit's good here. I'll want force fields before too long, right? Like force field plus feral on a soon to be coming turn. Oh, he can't force field. He has to hold a drone. That's right. So he's going to make me lose a feral, which kind of stinks. But... We have Grimbotches getting ready to defend soon, and we're continuing to push a lot of damage. Oh, but the Grimbotch is defending at the same time as he's giving me barriers, which kind of sucks, right? I guess I can just take advantage of that by not defending that turn, build a couple, like, non-defenders, like a Tarsier and a Grimbotch or something. Like, he has no defensive tech because of his chrono filter here. Okay, yeah, that defends, but you can't ever, like, <laughs> you won't have enough uh, tech to build another Valkyrian next, or enough drones to build another Valkyrian, which is what he wants to do. He can hold the Valkyrian next turn. Fine, I guess. I'm probably not holding the Grimbotch because of these barriers and the fact that he doesn't want to attack me. Yeah, I have enough defense. I don't need this Grimbotch. I'll just build like a Feral Warden so that I'm threatening to absorb if he uh, actually does attack. Something like... Well, this is not quite right. I wish I had a bit more defense. I could hold this, but it's killing a drone, which is pretty serious for him, I think. I don't know. If he has 10 bucks, is that really that amazing for him versus having nine? I don't think so. I don't need these NGs. He's not actually attacking. Right. If I hold the Grimbotch, he doesn't attack. That's for sure. So maybe I should click it? If I do, he could attack. And I'm not sure if that's good for him or not. Maybe I should just hold a drone. I think this is probably enough to convince him not to attack. But I guess this should be an engineer if I'm going to try something like that. No, I have Grimbotches to hold. I think I'll be fine. How's he going to add any more attack? And if he does attack, I'll get some barriers. So.
I'm kind of surprised he's letting me do this to him. Like, I think the Valkyrians are just not the right idea here, and you already had a big advantage by being player two, being able to go for Grimbotches and Ferals. But, I don't know. Uh, it, it, it certainly seems to me like I'm in a very strong position, but I always like need to be careful. I, I, I try not to claim that I've won when like I'm not sure, and sometimes I overdo it and say that I'm not sure when it's like a position that seems pretty amazing. This situation seems pretty good, but it's also sort of fragile in a way, a bit delicate. Um, I'm, I'm living on the razor's edge a bit more than he is. I'm very breach vulnerable, but... And I don't have access to blue to defend. But like, I have Grimbotches who want to defend, I have all this cool stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, indeed, we did not need to, to uh, click our... to hold our Grimbotch. Holding the drone was enough. And now, of course, he will want to attack, so... We should, um, we should be a little more serious. Hold the watch. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, wow, look at that. The lines were, like, identical. How does that happen? Doesn't normally, like, one player... Oh, right, of course, yes. We don't ever have the same income, but our incomes are on the same uh, line, right? Because we're each adding two drones per turn? Sure, of course. I think this conduit is probably fine. Um, maybe it's the right player two line for Ferals, and I just like have never really thought very hard about it. Um, but I think the Chrono Filter to get out Valkyrian was like, doesn't seem that good to me. And I, although like having built the Chrono Filter, I think you should build a Valkyrian, right? It puts me under a lot more pressure and like this wall doesn't really do that much, I don't think. If he builds the Valkyrian, I need to build like a Feral, and he clicks and he kills some NGs and damages my Feral. Um, this way he just like, I don't know, builds some Gauss cannons, which doesn't seem great at all. I guess he got himself a good Absorber. You know, there's that. And this first Valkyrian turn was pretty serious for me. But, I don't know. There's just, like, no real synergies for Valkyrian here, whereas, like, Feral Warden and Grimbotch are synergistic, because both of them work very well with a Red Rush kind of uh, low econ thing. Valkyrian doesn't synergize with any of them, except sort of your opponent's Grimbotches, right? Like, there was uh, this turn here, where I predicted he would not attack with his Valkyrian, and therefore it was an error for me to hold my Grimbotch. Um, makes things tougher for me if Valkyrian can threaten to attack, but not actually attack and get value out of either. Um, that's sort of bad for the Grimbosh player who would like the, the opponent's attack to be predictable. But I don't think it was enough, right? He's, he's just got so much less attack than I do. And, and less frequent access to any kind of defensive tech. And, and he recognizes this and gives up. Okay. Take it complete. Let's look at some numbers. There you go. 48042 are today's lucky numbers. Ugh, oh, another platinum ticket. I'm never going to get rid of these guys. Okay. Well. Oh, let's, let's celebrate. Let's open a power core and just look at an emote, maybe. Look at that, an emote. We got a Prismata Hype degree. I've never seen anything like this before. That's kind of cool. I'll take it. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for watching. Oh, look at that! 1900! 
I don't think I'm a rank 1900 player. There, there seriously is some rating inflation going on with all these new players, but uh, it's nice to see the number anyway. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.